Hi guys, I hope you're well. I wanted to go over why, or a couple of the reasons why I think we will have a social credit score system in the United States, very similar to what we have seen in China. And before I dive into that, I just, I want to thank someone who bought me this uh, shirt, a official Cerveza sickness shirt. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for getting me that shirt. <laughs> I think that if my memory serves me right, the person gave this to me at uh, Rebel Capitalist Live. So on that note, definitely check out rebelcapitalistlive.com. January 7th through the 9th, Houston. Headline speakers like Ron Paul, G. Edward Griffin, Chris Cole, all your favorites. Luke Groman. It's going to be amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, let's go ahead and go into my thought process here. And I think that uh, this will help you guys figure out the probabilities as to what the likelihood is we will have a uh, social credit score here. I think the probability is high, but uh, you could have a different opinion. I wanna start by going to this really quick summary of the fourth turning that was done by Neil Howe. Uh, he actually did the summary as well for, uh, for Pegi. And he talks about the four generations that we have in the world, or not, just the majority of the population fall into this category. And uh, how that could affect the future and how it could affect social unrest and maybe more importantly, how it affects the mainstream societal narrative and what we value, what we prioritize in our life as a, as a group. And it starts off with the category called profits, which is actually the baby boomers. But let's go ahead and play this and... Uh, you guys will see the, the differences between the four generations that he's referring to that make up the fourth turning. Grow up as increasingly indulged post-crisis children, crusaders of the awakening. These individuals become moralistic midlifers, emerge as the wise elders guiding the next crisis. The most recent example is the baby boomer generation Nomads grow up as underprotected children during an awakening, coming of age as the alienated young adults of a post-awakening world. These individuals mellow into pragmatic midlife leaders during a crisis and age into tough post-crisis elders. The most recent example is Generation X. Heroes grow up as increasingly protected post-awakening children, coming of age as the heroic young team workers of a crisis. Heroes demonstrate hubris as energetic midlifers and emerge as powerful elders attacked by the next awakening. The most recent example is the millennial generation. Artists grow up as overprotected children during a crisis. Come you hear that? So artists grow up as overprotected children. I know many of you on the live stream now were born, raised in the 70s and 80s. And you remember a time where quite literally nobody wore a helmet riding a bicycle. That, that would have been seen as utterly ridiculous. And now, uh, I would assume in a lot of areas, parents will go to jail if their kids aren't wearing a helmet on a, on a uh, bicycle. Just one little anecdotal uh, story, but you guys can relate. Those of you who grew up in the 70s and the 80s and before, you look around at how the kids are raised today and it just completely boggles your mind. It, it, it's hard to even fathom how overprotected uh, they actually are. I've got friends with uh, kids and I, they just, even when the kids are seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, they can't go five feet without adult supervision. It's absolutely staggering. 
it's like that movie Bubble Boy. Uh, we're just, uh, you know, th- we're just raising these kids in a laboratory. We're raising them in a bubble of uh, s- perceived safety and protection. But let's keep listening. Of age as the sensible young adults of a post crisis world. Artists eventually break free as indecisive midlife leaders during an awakening and age into empathic post awakening elders. The most recent example is the Homelander generation. So, what does all that's Generation uh, Z, um, the Homelander generation? That's another way to describe Gen Z. So, and those are the kids that were born uh, after 2000, and those kids are now turning uh, 21, and they're going in, you know, graduating from college, they're going into the workplace, and, but they're dominating social media, uh, TikTok as an example, uh, Instagram. And I think as they get closer to their 30s uh, and become a bigger and bigger percentage of the workforce, and uh, voting adults and whatnot, that uh, they are going to not only accept a social credit score, but they'll also, they'll, they'll actually welcome it. They'll, they may even demand to have a social credit score. And obviously this is, this is very uh, generalizing, or we're generalizing here. This is uh, not to say that every single person that's that age group falls into this category. Of course not. But as a group, this is what they, this is, these are their tendencies. I think it's the best way to say it. So understanding that uh, they were just unbelievably overprotected. Is it really tough to understand why they would value safety above freedom? I mean, it makes sense. Uh, so whenever I see any pushback on social media or whatever, uh, and I just it, I scratch my head and I'm just shocked that I have to really try to argue with fellow Americans as to the the, the need for freedom or the value of freedom. Uh, but then when you look at something like this and you just think it through a little bit, it makes total sense that they would prioritize freedom, or excuse me, prioritize safety over freedom. So now uh, let's see how this plays out in the real world. This is another uh, clip. Let me make sure I've got everyone on this. Yep, okay, this is working good. Uh, Good, good, good. All right, I've got another clip from a YouTube channel, Phil DeFranco, Philip DeFranco. And if you don't know who Philip DeFranco is, he's, he's a huge YouTuber. You can see right here uh, 6.34 million subscribers. Uh, his channel gets roughly 17 million views per month. That's a lot. And it's kind of, he's kind of like the, the go-to guy for news on YouTube. And he talks about kind of mainstream news, and he also talks about kind of news that would be um, interesting to someone who is into YouTube, social media, Instagram. And so it's a lot of like celebrity stuff and, um, you know, Jake Paul and uh, the Kardashians. And I, I know this video, he was talking something about OnlyFans or whatever. But uh, I think... It, it's a good illustration, or he is a good reflection on the attitudes of the younger uh, millennial generation and then this Gen Z generation that Neil Howe was talked about, and this generation that is that was just wildly overprotected, and uh, also uh, the generation that seems to as a whole, prioritize safety over freedom. And uh, one other thing I'd like to point out, that Jonathan Haidt has done a lot of work on this. He's the author that wrote the book, uh, The Coddling of the American Mind, I believe was the title. 
And he made a point about this generation that because they were so overprotected at school, as an example, they never had the opportunity to resolve conflict on their own between themselves. Like when I was growing up in the 70s, if you had a conflict with one of your classmates or one of your friends, you didn't go to a teacher like like that. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Like that was the last thing that you would do is go to a teacher or go to someone's parent. No, absolutely not. You would, I mean, if you're a guy, usually you, you just, you'd fight or you, you would, you would, res and if it didn't come to that, you would have an argument. You would you would resolve it between the two of you or the three of you or however many people were in the group that had a disagreement. You, The last thing you would do is get an, an adult involved. But Jonathan Haidt makes the point that now that's the, the kids never, ever, ever, ever resolve anything on their own. That's not the way they were brought up. It's the complete opposite of the way I was brought up. They were brought up to every single time you have a dispute, every single time there's a conflict, you run straight to an adult and let the adult handle the dispute. Let the adult handle it. So again, is it any surprise that these younger uh, people and these younger generations favor central planning? Is it any surprise that they gravitate towards uh, like an authority figure, toward, towards uh, just uh, you know having other people resolve, really having other authority figures like the government solve their problems for them? I, I mean, it should be no surprise whatsoever. So let, let's look at this example story that he leads with on this uh, video that came out on August 17th. And it was how bad of a guy this gentleman is who dared to get onto a New York subway without wearing a mask. And uh, this elderly gal, you know, got upset with him and he gets in her face. Now, I'm not saying that he should have done this. The guy, uh, I mean, he behaved himself as, 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 uh, as, as far as the video shows. He was being a jerk, and just, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse to be, um, in my opinion, to be impolite, unless you know the person uh, is extremely impolite to you, maybe. But uh, even then, I think it's better to take the high road, which this guy probably doesn't. <laughs> but um, so what? He's a jerk. Okay, but let's focus on a couple things here. What is he standing up for? Right? What is his position? And is it is all the fuss that these uh, Gen Zers are making on social media, is it about the fact that he's a jerk or is it about the fact that he was standing up for freedom? And then let's also notice what they do. Just like Jonathan Haidt said, instead of now when they're adults, they don't have a teacher to go to, to solve all their problems. So what they do is they try to go to the person's employer. They try to go, <clears throat> excuse me, they try to go to the government. They try to go to the person's family member, whatever, to get this person banned from their job, to destroy their lives, and to take away their livelihood and their ability to put, put a roof over their head. That's how they solve problems right now. That's what makes sense to them, because that's how they were raised. Where people like you and I, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't, okay, so some guy's a jerk. I, I'm not going to call his employer and, and tell on him. No, I'm going to go right up to him, and I'm going to handle the problem. I'm going to tell him he's a jerk to his face. And we're gonna we're gonna solve it right there, mano y mano. I don't need to go to his employer. I don't need to get his to make him lose his job. I don't need to tell his parents or his family. I mean, it's utter nonsense. But this is how the younger generations. This is what they see as the right thing to do. And uh, again, it makes sense. They're brought up in, with a safe space. They were brought up as though 
you know, there is nothing that is more of a priority than your feelings and that you feel safe at all times. Well, okay, think that through. Is it going to make one of these younger generations, one of these individuals, is it going to make them feel safe to go up and confront this guy and just and just solve things and, and resolve the problem, the conflict yourself? No, no, no. That makes them feel very, very, very unsafe. Oh, yes. So the, the safe thing to do, quote unquote, is to go and again, get an authority figure, get the government involved to put this guy in his place because he is making other people feel bad and feel uncomfortable. And there is no greater sin on the planet Earth right now. So let's see what this guy's uh, what this guy did and then what they think uh, should be his punishment, let's say. With a man then going on to make similar comments to people coming to the woman. So if you didn't hear that, he's just he was shouting 1776. And the, the gal said, you should respect your elders. And he says, I respect freedom. I mean, it's the ex I think many of us share that attitude. Now, again, the guy, you know, he's yelling and whatnot. I, I, that's not really my style. And maybe the guy's being a jerk. But... There's a lot of people on this planet Earth that are jerks. But do they deserve this? Let's keep going. Men's defense, getting in their faces, also telling them to sit the fuck down. With the video going viral, we saw the backlash growing, the anger growing, even the acting head of the Metropolitan Transportation Authority calling the guy a jerk. This also resulted in a number of people working to identify him, including a number of TikTokers who are known for reporting these kinds of terrible people to their workplaces. Or Did you hear what he said? A lot of these TikTokers that are known for reporting these terrible people to their employers. And, and, I, and I'd ask the question, is he, do these people think this guy is quote unquote terrible for yelling and being rather obnoxious or do they think he's terrible because he's trying to stand up for freedom. I think that's an interesting question. Or other groups that they're associated with. Eventually with this situation, we saw a TikToker Savannah Sparks identifying him as 27-year-old Ryan Bartle. I mean, is that creepy or what? That they're 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 going into his background, they're like I mean, trying to mine his, I, I guess his social media. I mean, do, you don't have anything else better to do with your life, then find some guy who was standing up for freedom, let's say, and believed wholeheartedly in the values that this country was built on and was being maybe a little obnoxious and a little bit of a jerk, but you have nothing better to do with your life than try to spend hours and hours and hours going into this guy's background to try to find pictures of the guy Give me a break and then try to notify his employer. Like what? It's just, it's complete insanity. But if you look at it through the lens of the fourth turning and how the generations are different, again, it makes total sense. Saying that she also found his mom and sister and told them about his behavior. Also, at some point, saying that he worked at CarMax in Virginia, so she reached out to them in case he was still employed. After that, in case he was still employed, so this same gal goes to all that hassle. Then she not then she contacts his family members, like what? And then she tries to find out where the guy has worked in the past and notify every single one of his employers. I mean, think about what that conversation would be like. Hello, CarMax? Yes, did uh, Joe Blow work for you? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, well, I need to tell you that he was a jerk on the subway. He was behaving obnoxiously. Oh, okay. And, like, like <laughs> can you imagine being an employer and getting that phone call? Like you run, let's say you run a, a, a small business where you have uh, 20 employees or something like that. And someone calls you and, send, and says, hey, I need to tell you. That, and not while he was on the job, by the way. Not while he was on the job. While he was doing something in his private life. 
yeah, I need to tell you that so-and-so was on vacation in Florida and uh, he was a real jerk. He was behaving obnoxiously. Yeah, I know he wasn't on the clock and he wasn't working for you and he really wasn't representing your company. But I think that you should know that that's the type of person you employ. I'd be like, are you are you serious? Like, I'd, I, I would literally ask that person, I'd say, you don't have anything else better to do with your life. Like, like you thought this was important? It, it, it's not at all. I mean, it's it, it, again, it just completely... It, it boggles my mind. Let's keep going here. Carmax actually made a statement saying that he wasn't an employee, but then after pushback from Internet Salusa who claimed to have found information suggesting otherwise, Carmax clarified that he has not worked for the company. So, okay, I hope you heard that. So what they do is they call Carmax. Carmax says that he's no longer an employee, but they keep digging and digging and digging and digging and saying, oh, yes, he is, Carmax. Oh, yes, he is. Like, like what level of, of, of mental instability is required for you to pursue this to such a degree? I, I, or maybe emotional instability is, is a better word. It's just, you, you know, it goes back to how I always describe wealth in our economy. It's the production of goods and services, right? We are at a point where people are actually allocating incredible amounts of time, incredible percentages, portions of their life to trying to just dox some dude that was being a jerk on a subway. I mean, this is where we are right now. And again, I think it goes right back to the fourth turning since May of this year. But to be clear, as of right now, Bartles has not made a statement confirming or denying whether it is or is not him, though his LinkedIn page has been deleted. And now, as the story has grown, more people getting involved, they're saying that he also attended an anti-vax mandate rally in New York City the same day that he acted out on the subway. But... Ah, uh, now we start to see, is it really the fact that he's a jerk or is it the fact that he's standing up for freedom and... The worst crime, the worst sin of them all, is he attended an anti-vax rally. That in and of itself should make someone suspicious. I'm, this is them talking, not me. And I think in the future, just that in and of itself, a lot of these people who are in this generation and on TikTok and doing these things they're going to deem that as a reason why you should lose your job, a reason why you should be banned from society. Main point to the guy in this video, go fuck yourself. You're a trash person doing trash things and you belong in the dump. Who gets in the face of and... You're a trash person doing trash things and you belong in the dump. Really? Like honestly, you you can you can tell that from called a ten second clip from a cell phone and a video. You see, and, and again, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't know this Philip DeFranco person. He could be, you know, someone who is is fighting for freedom. I don't know. I, I would I would be surprised. I mean, his shirt says emotionally exhausted, and. Um, I think that in and of itself tells you what you need to know. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know the guy, so I don't want to throw him under the bus. But what I'm doing is highlighting his channel because I think he is um, really catering to the generation that Neil Howe is talking about in the fourth turning, the generation that Jonathan Haidt made abundantly clear really never learned to handle conflict on their own and between themselves that always looked to an authority figure to do it for them. And so my point, the takeaway here is understanding that this attitude is pervasive throughout the younger generations 
And now these generations are becoming adults. They're going into the workplace. They are voting. They're having a bigger say as to what we do as a society or how we are governed by our politicians. Is, is it, would it be a shock to any of us if these individuals who favor these course of action or this type of action, would it be a shock to any of us that they also favored to have some sort of social credit score? That this guy on the train, all we would have to do is, is dock his credit score by five points. And not only would he lose his job, but he wouldn't be able to get a mortgage. He wouldn't be able to rent a car. He wouldn't be able to fly in a plane. I mean, again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but do you think that any of these people who are taking hours out of their schedule just to try to find this guy's family, just to try to find his employer to make sure that he gets fired, do you think they would really, uh, do you think they'd really be hesitant if the government was issuing a social credit score or do you think they would welcome it? And my further point is in the future, I think they will not only welcome it, but I think they'll actually demand that the government institutes a social credit score. All right. Let me do some shout outs here, then I'm going to get going. It's just, it's just, I, I know a lot of you feel the same way. I, it's, I'm just at a loss of words. I mean, wh whenever I, I see stuff like this, it, it just, it's such a foreign concept for me that it's very tough to even articulate my, my thoughts. Because uh, I just, for the life of me, I never, ever in my wildest dreams thought that I would see this uh, in the United States. Never, ever, ever, ever. And it's just, it's just to try to, you know, I always try to be as objective as possible. And I always try to put myself in other people's shoes so I can see the world through their eyes so I can try to somehow sympathize or empathize with their position. Maybe there's something I'm missing, but no matter how hard I try, there is no way that I can, I could ever understand what goes through the mind of the individual that tries to cyber stalk someone that was being a quote-unquote jerk on a train just so I could destroy, just so I could have someone else destroy their life. Just so I could tell the local authority figure as to what they have done so I could destroy or have the authority figure destroy their livelihood. Like I, I can't, no matter how hard I try, I, I just can't see the world uh, through that lens. And I think that's why it's just so incredibly difficult for me to even uh, articulate what's going on or uh, get my mind around it. All right, we've got Motivates Me, Track Car, Money Trends, Justin Miller, We Are the Remnants. Greg Harrison, El Chamillo, Joseph Gerard, Self-Defense for Kids. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we should be encouraging kids to do. Get out there, play sports on your own, maybe, heaven forbid, without adult supervision, so they can actually learn how to settle disputes and conflicts between themselves. Novel idea. And while at the same time teaching them confidence and teaching them skills that they can actually use in real life that will help them become more productive citizens and create a society 
that is wealthier because instead of taking all of our time trying to tell on everybody for being jerks, we're actually out there creating goods and services. Alan Zibelman, 7-7 seven, seven, Pork Barrel Investing, Rogue, uh, oh, it skipped on me, sorry guys, Casey Sunshine in the house, Moody's in the house, Dwayne Hunt, Justin Miller, Trader Chad, Nate, Cheesy Dish, Lori Maurer, Sustainable Lumber Company, Drifter, Drift, Drifterted, <laughs> Escape the Matrix, yeah, that's... I know every single time I see this guy's username, I always say that's exactly what that's exactly the world we're living in right now. Definitely the matrix. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I will see you on the next video.